What's up everybody? Well, I got another Fire Bat Mini PC gameplay video for you guys today. And today, we're gonna try us up some Black Myth Wukong. Now, on this PC, this is probably not gonna run very good. And if this is all you got, I would recommend probably avoiding this game. Unless this is gonna be a night and day, day difference from the benchmarking tool, but I don't think so. Cause this thing only lets you use four gigs of VRAM now that I got 32 gigs of RAM. Even though I set it for eight in the BIOS. Something in Windows is saying, uh-uh-uh, you only get four. And in a game like this, four just doesn't cut it. Even at 720p, it seemed like it was hitting its max and just giving us weird, like not artifacting, but textures weren't being displayed properly. It was getting like this poor FPS. So honestly, this is probably a waste of one of my licenses of the day, since I know this has Denuvo, or at least they say it has Denuvo. So I know I'm gonna get to a computer and um, hopefully not the Asus. It'll probably be after the Alienware, I think. It'll probably go, eh, you've played too many. No more for the day, but we'll see. It'd be great if they made the allotment like 10 computers or something like that. Then I could actually get done today. But in any case, why don't we stop blabbing? Let's hop into the game and we'll pretty much just do a carbon copy of what we did for the Asus Ally X. Start at 1080p, which is way too high of a base resolution. Still with FSR, of course, and then go from there. So why don't we go ahead and get into the game? All right. Well, all of these are going to probably go by pretty quick, and I don't even know if I'm going to bother getting any gameplay on half of them, because I don't think it's going to get playable FPS, but we will see. Regardless, we will run at least a benchmark so you guys can see what kind of FPS to expect, even if I don't get any gameplay. But it even tells you right here, like, all these settings, if you do these, you're going to not have fun. But hey, let's go run a benchmark if it's so willing to let me. All right, well, we got a whopping 15 average FPS, a maximum of 18, and a minimum of nine. So we went into the single digits, and then a low fifth of 13. And it says we use 3.8 gigs of VRAM, but still, we only have four. So I think we have a VRAM problem. All right, I talked myself into it. Just for shits and giggles, we're gonna see what this would be like to play. And yeah, we're not even like loading textures properly because I don't think it has enough VRAM to. So yeah, you need more than four gigs of VRAM if you want to play this game, even at like, whatever the thing is at 66% of 1080p. And obviously the settings are just too high too. But I don't know, this game might just be too much for this. I mean, the Steam Deck was already pretty bad and needed frame gen to even be remotely playable. This, I just don't know. It might just not be playable on any settings. But we're still gonna try. But I'm just not gonna sit here and play like this for too awful long. We'll probably limit this to like a minute-ish of me torturing myself at 16 FPS. Sometimes at this kind of FPS, this can make people nauseous. Luckily, I am not affected by stuff like that. I can't, I don't think I've ever been car sick, seasick, or anything to do with motion sickness. The only time I ever remember throwing up is all food poisoning, really. Anyway, all right, now we'll try a base of 900p, just like we did on the Ally X. So now let's look at the rest of the settings here. We'll try medium this time with FSR at whatever it wanted to do stock, which I guess is 79. And there we go. Now we'll run a quick benchmark real quick, and then we'll get a little gameplay. This time we got an average of 20 FPS, a maximum of 24, and a minimum of 14 with a low fifth of 17. And total VRAM use is even more this time. We got 3.9. So, again, this is probably not gonna be very good. It's probably gonna have like missing textures and stuff, but hey, let's go try it out. All right, well, more of the same. Since it doesn't have enough VRAM, it looks like it's honestly just like loading what the textures look like when you have it on low from my testing on the Steam Deck and Ally already. This looks like just like low settings. Minus like playable frame rates. Usually on those when I was going like low, I could get playable-ish frame rates. Not so much here. But we gotta keep in mind, even with the little upgrades I did to this thing, this thing's only like a $430 PC or something like that. So it's not exactly a powerhouse. Mind you, if all you care about is gaming, you could go get a Series X used for way cheaper than this, or even brand new. But then you don't get all the cool freedoms of PC. And I mean, you could honestly just get an external GPU on this thing and then it'd be even more powerful than any of the consoles. But then you're spending a shit ton more money. You could get like probably five or six of those Series S's for the price of all of that. So. They, those consoles definitely still have their place. They're great value for money. I just don't like how restricted they are. 
but I'm not one of those guys that's like, they shouldn't exist. And hell, look at the Switch. That thing's like the weakest thing ever, and I'm pretty sure that thing is technically the most popular sold console. Anyway, now, let's move on. All right, now, here's 720p. Well, at least a base of 720p. I don't know what it's gonna do with the FSR. All right, it did what it did on the Steam Deck. It did 98, but then all of a sudden it made it drop to 96 randomly, even though I didn't touch it. So let's see what it does here. Let's go run that benchmark. Well, we got close to playable frame rates this time with an average of 27, a maximum of 35, and a minimum of 20, and a low fifth of 23. And the VRAM used is 3.8, but it probably just did that because it fucked up and didn't have enough again. But we are on low now, so you'll see what I mean. I bet you it'll look the same as it did for the other two because it didn't have enough in VRAM. <laughs> Let's go find out. Well, here is low 720p. And as you can see, it still can't quite hit a minimum of 30 everywhere. But this is definitely the closest to playable we've had so far. So it's kind of funny how playable this feels after all the other way lower FPS I've been feeling on this thing, but I don't think too many people would find this playable. And I was right. This looks almost identical to how it did the rest of the time, because it just didn't have enough VRAM. I think if it doesn't have enough VRAM, it just goes, nah, you idiot, here's the low settings. You can't have these other settings, you dumb dumb. You don't have enough VRAM. And it's like, well, I should. I told it to be eight in the BIOS. I probably said this so much, I'm sounding a broken record, but a while back when I first upgraded to 32 in BIOS, I told it to do 8 gigs, because I figured that's plenty when you have 32. I mean, hell, even the Ally with its 24 and having 8 is plenty. That's still like 16 for everything else, and then 8 for the GPU. Plenty. Especially for something that can only go up to 1080p reliably, and not even in stuff like this. So, anyway though. Windows didn't like that, and I'm limited to four. Last up, because I know someone will be curious, we're gonna do 720p with frame gen, just like we did at the end of the ASUS Ally X video. Ah, see, it brought it down to 96. I didn't touch that shit. Interesting. I wonder if that's like something to do with frame gen. Anyway though, those are the settings. Let's run a quick benchmark real quick before the gameplay. All right, well, with frame gen help, we finally have hit an average of 36, which is playable, a maximum of 42, but still couldn't stay at a minimum of 30 and got 27 with a low fifth of 31 with 3.7 gigs of VRAM used now. So, I don't know. Maybe with this it'll feel playable, but probably not. Let's go find out. Well, now here we are back in the game. And no, upon immediately moving, it still feels like absolute doo-doo. But that's what I pretty much expected, like I've explained a million times. Frame gen only really helps when you're close to 60 or above 60. Preferably above 60. It can kind of help feel like things are smoothed out to some people. I have never really felt any smoother. Now it looks smoother. Like as I'm watching myself play, this definitely looks smoother than it was. But I remember it did not feel like in my input got any better, even with a controller. So I can imagine if I was somebody who was playing this with a keyboard and mouse, it would feel worse. I'm way more susceptible to input latency and all that when I'm using keyboard and mouse versus a controller. I had to open a pop, tried to open it. But I think the mic still picked it up, but at least it'll be a quiet noise versus a right in your face, like giant noise. But yeah, unfortunately I think this is just a little bit too much for this thing, but still, let's get a little camera gameplay too. All right, let's get some camera recorded gameplay now. Well, we're not recording with OBS or anything. Still not very playable. Seeing as though the only time we can get over 30 FPS average is when we have frame gen on, and we know that's not really the real frame rate. So, just like with the Steam Deck, I would say this is pretty much borderline unplayable. I mean, it's still impressive that the little thing can even play it at all, but I wouldn't really want to play it this personally, but just like with the Steam Deck, if this is good enough for you and what have you, 
Go for it, you know? Don't let me, in my opinion, stop you. And besides, I'm spoiled by having all these other different systems I can play on as well, so. Of course, if you got something better than this, of course you're going to want to go play on that. Only makes sense. Hey, here's some people to fight. Now it's my plan. Bastards explode. I think I would have won if I was at full life, though, just barely. I was already at less than half life from getting exploded by all those dudes. But that's okay. They do come back. If you die, everything comes back. I was kind of hoping for that, actually. I don't know what explodes and what doesn't, so I'm just going to fucking get away from them anytime I kill anything from now on. We're just going to run. I went back into it. Got the dodge part right, but it doesn't do you any good if you dodge into the damn blast. Let's gather that on up. J Lotus. Alright though, I think that's plenty for this system. So why don't we go wrap this video on up? Well, all right, guys. Oh, Misty, I didn't know you were back there. Uh, that's about all I got for this particular video. Obviously, it did not run very good on this particular little mini PC. Pretty much just about as bad as the Steam Deck. 
Though the Steam Deck, I'd say, did slightly better. I'd say only because it had access to more than four gigs of VRAM. I believe the Steam Deck, at least mine, set to six gigs. I don't know what they are normally, but that's just what mine is. And I never mess with any of that shit, so it should be stock like that on everybody's. This thing won't let me use more than four, even though I set it to eight in the BIOS, like I said in the beginning of the video. I don't know what is it, what's up its butt, but something in Windows or maybe the AMD drivers are limiting it. And it's got 32 gigs of RAM, so it should be able to do eight. But in any case, definitely not the best place to play it. I mean, it's, if it's your only option and you like what you saw here and it's good enough for you, cool. Not trying to insult nobody or nothing, but I don't know. That's just a little too slow for me, just like on the Steam Deck. The Ally was even barely passable, but it at least did a pretty decent job once we got to 900p and medium settings. It was at least able to stay over 30 without frame gen or anything like that. This and the Steam Deck both needed it to even say we were getting playable FPS. But, you know, I say that, but we know it's not really real frames, so... I'm basically putting virtual quotation marks every time I say it like that. Anyway though, it's time to wrap this video one up so I can go get started on the ASUS G15 Advantage. I wonder how that thing will handle this. Hopefully quite well. Guess we'll find out. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, because I sure as hell enjoyed making it for you guys. And until the next video, peace out, guys.